and good morning to all my lovely students out there. I welcome you all for today's English class. Students, as you all are aware that we are doing the module, which is module number 7 from the English workbook, part 2. So today's date is 6th of November 2020. And the next topic which we are going to undertake is subject verb agreement. I'm sure students, you still remember that in our last class, we have dealt with regards to model verbs, right? And in today's class, we'll take up the topic of subject verb agreement. Now, what is our learning outcomes? So by the end of today's class, you all will be able to identify and differentiate <laughs> between subject, verb and object in a sentence. And you all will be able to frame grammatically correct and meaningful sentences. So it's very important that in English, you frame grammatically correct and meaningful sentences. So today's topic will actually help you to write proper sentences and it will improve your writing skills. So let's get started, students. First and foremost, students, as you all know, how many parts of a sentence are there? There are basically two parts in a sentence, the subject and the predicate. And we also know that under a sentence, there are three things which we can find under a sentence. Which are those three things? Just to recall back what you have done in your third standard, that is subject, verb, and object. Right now, let us recall back what a subject is. All right, students. So, uh, it is what or whom the sentence is about. So, the subject is the center of the sentence. So, it is the doer of the action. As we all know, the subject is what? It may be a thing, it may be an animal, or it may be a person who is doing the action in a sentence. As we all know, a sentence always has a verb in it, right? That is an action. So, here we can see that the subject is the doer of the action. It may be a person animal or thing so for an example i've taken over there you can see an example over there that is ravi is dancing on the stage now students can you identify who is the subject over there in that sentence yes it is ravi why because ravi is performing an action and the sentence is talking all about ravi right it is centering around the subject which is Ravi. Let us see what a verb is. A sentence, the next part of a sentence is verb. Every sentence has a verb. So what it is? It is the action that the subject does. So verb is what in a sentence? It is the action or the activity which the subject does. Okay. The same sentence, let us take the same sentence. Ravi is dancing on the stage. So, Ravi, by now all of us, we are clear that Ravi is the subject who is doing the action. Now, which is the verb? Can you identify it, students? Yes, it is, is dancing, right? And is is the helping verb, whereas dancing is the main verb, right, students? In our last class, we have seen that what is a helping verb or an auxiliary verb and the main verb, right? Uh, helping verb does not actually depicts an action it is just helping the main verb to convey the meaning and which is the main verb over there in this sentence it is dancing so let us see what is an object it is the thing or the person who receives the action so object it is not necessary that all sentence should have an object. Most of the sentences do have objects and some of the sentences, they don't have object, right? To convey the meaning. So that's all right. So that is why we have transitive and intransitive verb, which, which is altogether another topic. So in the same sentence, can we identify which is the object that is the receiver of the action? Example, the same example, Ravi is dancing on the stage. Now, Ravi is the subject we know. Is dancing is the verb. 
what is the object the receiver it will be the stage right yes so these are the parts of a sentence now students the topic which we have taken to today is subject verb agreement so the subject and the verb needs to agree means needs to have the same thought in order to give a, a clear meaning to the reader okay there should be an agreement there should be a good term of the subject and the verb for this there are three important rules which we will be seeing now let us see we have uh, understood what a subject is and also the verb in a sentence and an object in a sentence so there is an activity for you all students you need to identify the errors in the following sentences and correct it just to see how much knowledge you all have with regards to subject verb agreement the first one the girls walks to college every day there's an error yes it should be the girls walk to college every day right what about mohan dance well yes it should be mohan dances well number three they plays in the park they play in the park and number four i like to paint now here i likes to paint it is incorrect the correct statement should be i like to paint now students in all the four sentences what do you find there is an error or a grammatical mistake there is a disagreement of the subject and the verb the first sentence girls and walks right girls is a plural that is the noun is plural whereas the verb there is singular right uh, i i should emphasize that for a singular noun to turn it into a plural we add s e s i e s v e s right but that is the opposite case with verb in verb all the verbs are in the plural forms in order to make it singular we add s or e s all right students so it is just the opposite of noun that's why in the sentence the girls what should be walk walk is the plural form okay it is not walks number two mohan dance well now mohan is only one that is singular subject then the verb should be what the verb should also be singular right but here the verb is what plural dance right so what we have to add in order to make a verb singular s or es so here mohan dances well similarly you can see sentence number three they play in the park not plays because they is what it is plural when plural noun should have plural verb so plays is singular because they have already added s to the verb you remove that it becomes plural i like to pin now here you might be confused right you should always remember students that the pronoun i and the pronoun you always requires a plural verb okay students the pronoun i that is i and you y o u always requires a plural verb so i it will not be likes i like to paint so students with this you got a little bit idea about subject verb agreement let us see the three different rules and try to understand it more clearly so let us start with rule number one okay students so there you can see all the rules over there rules of subject verb agreement so rule number one is a singular subject takes a singular verb which i have already explained to you whereas a plural subject takes a plural verb so if the subject is singular the verb should be singular if the subject is plural the verb should be plural except in case of the pronoun i and you all right students so see the example number 1 raman sings well 
Raman is singular subject and we have given a singular verb because verb is all in the plural form. So in order to make it singular, what did we do? We add S to the verb over there that is sings, right? Raman sings well. Now rule number two, two singular subjects. If in a sentence, there are two singular subjects connected by so the two singular subjects are joined or connected by or that is o r or either or or neither nor requires a singular verb so there are two singular subjects if they are connected with the word or either or or neither nor it requires what it requires a singular verb but there's a little bit of twist there. However, if one of the subject is plural and is nearer to the main verb, then the verb will be plural. So, if one of the subject is plural, that means one subject is singular, another subject is plural, and the plural subject is nearer to the main verb, that is the main verb, then the verb will be what? It will be plural. Alright students? So you have to check the one which is nearer. If there are two subjects, you check the one which is nearer to the main verb. If the nearer one is singular, you give singular. If the nearer one is plural, you tend to give plural verb. Let us see some example. Number one, my uncle or aunt is arriving today. Now here in the sentence, you can see there are two subjects, uncle and aunt, which are joined by the word or, right? But I have taken what is over here. You can see is arriving, not are arriving because both are singular subjects. Let us see number two example. Neither Mary nor her children want to go for shopping. Here. It has been joined. There are two subjects, right? Mary and her children. But Mary is a singular subject, whereas children is plural. Child is singular. Children means more than one. So it is near to the verb want, right? So we don't write neither Mary nor her children wants to go for shopping. It will be wrong. So if that one, the verb, the subject is nearer to the uh, verb is plural, then we tend to give plural verb, right? Here you can see children is plural. So verb is also plural. That is want. All right, student. Now rule number three, use a plural verb with two or more subjects connected by and. So if there are two or more subjects, Connected by the word and, A and D and, we have to use plural verb. Why? Because and is joining. Whereas in rule number two is either or. That means an option is given. That is why we don't use plural verbs very easily. But in rule number three, we use plural verb because both the subjects are joined by the word and. Okay, conjunction and. So here, what we need to do, we need to give plural verbs. Example, Amir and Ravi go to school together. So here we can see there are two subjects which have been joined together. That is Amir and Ravi joined together with the word and. So here, instead of writing goes, we gave a plural verb that is go. Amir and Ravi go to school together. So these are the three important rules which you have to keep in mind. Singular subject, singular verb, two singular subject connected with o, or, either or, neither nor, we give singular verb. But if one of the subject is what is plural and is nearer to the main verb, we give a plural verb and the last one is if there are two subject connected together in a sentence with the word and what do we do we give a plural verb now just to test your understanding there's small activity for you 
Now, I won't be giving you the answer to this question. Students, you please practice this. This is practice time. Identify the errors in the following sentences and you need to rewrite it. So, you have to identify the sentences. There is a mismatch of subject verb agreement. I'll just read it out. You practice it in your English copy. Number one, I love playing cricket. Number two, Tanya live in Sri Lanka. Number three, either my brother or sister have made the bet. And number four, John and Jack is best friends. The last one, the children swims well. So each of this sentence has a error. It has an error with regards to subject verb agreement. Identify it and correct the sentence. So that's all for today, students. So keep learning, keep studying, stay happy and safe. I shall see you all in my next class with yet another topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.